mean that I was just upset. No. Really? <laughs> really? I just got through reading, I have believed, and so have I spoken. Ooh. You need to do something about that. Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. That's all of us. Wasn't just Paul. When we read these things, we think, boy, this is a Pauline epistle. Honey, the Holy Spirit inspired him to write this, that we are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live. Yet, not I, but Christ lives where? Amen. In me. And the life, which, watch this now, which I now live in this flesh, this body, I'm living by the faith of, underline the faith of, not faith in Christ. That's not what it said. It said the faith of the Son of God who loved me, who gave himself for me. Amen. Who did he give himself to be crucified for? Amen. Say me, make it personal. Me, me, make it personal. Yeah, don't say us, say me. It's personal. That's all people won't say nothing, so you say me. He gave himself for me. But how do I live as a Christian? By the faith of the Son of God. Notice what kind of faith we have. What kind of faith do we have? Right there. The faith of the Son of God. God, what did he do with that kind of faith? He only raised the dead with that kind of faith. Now, whoa, I'm coming down where you at. Hey, man, I got oh, man. Let me get in the camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they said, bam. <laughs> right. <laughs> we live by the faith of the Son of God. When we teach Preach. Some people struggle with that right there. You know why they struggle with it? Because the first thing they'll say is, that was Jesus. That was the Son of God. We cannot operate like Him. He had all power. Satan tells you that. But is it not true that when that 120 people came down from the upper room on the day of Pentecost and started moving out into different cities and different regions that when they got in one place people looked at those guys casting out devils and healing the sick raising the dead and said they are Christians do you know what Christian means? Christian do you know what it also is translated they are like Christ. Yeah. Huh? What, what, how could they say that? Because of the works that they did. Some people will say, well, they look like Jesus. It had nothing to do with the look. They talk like Jesus. It had nothing to do with speech patterns. It was their actions. Don't you know the reputation of Peter walking down the street and his shadow passing over sick people, raising them up? Do you know that reputation spread out? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Call somebody. Stephen went down to a city and turned it upside down. What was he? A deacon. A deacon can turn a city upside down. That's God telling the church, if I can use a deacon to do what the apostles done, then all of the body has been given the same power that raised Christ from the dead. And all of those that we believe that walk in this power. Come on, I feel like that too. But I did that last night. Amen. It's time out for doctrine. Doctrine is killing Christians. They are going to church trying to please everybody else by the way they dress. Yes, we do. Not knocking people, just letting them know there's a doctor in town called the Holy Ghost and he cures every type of disease. Oh, come on, he's sick of a host. He set free every bound person. Amen. Come on, shout amen. Glory. Now you 
think about what I'm telling you people. God wants a church in this last day where ushers and hostess and singers of music and music players have the same understanding of who they are and they are not on social media trying to get a name but they are spreading the gospel Ooh, i'm almost answering again they're telling people that jesus this same jesus that god raised from the dead is alive and evermore and he lives in the church and the church has not lost its power come on put your hands together hallelujah we have not lost our power we're just having a little lukewarm spell right now. Amen. Oh, but God's got that dove. Yes. <laughs> that dove is in his final flight. Yes. Coming to America. Yes. I'm not talking about the movie with that man, Eddie Murphy. No. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. Yes. Coming to America with signs and wonders more than what we see. There is another level of a demonstration of God. And it will be greater than the early church. Because he said the latter end shall be greater than the former. Come on somebody. You think God did something to the apostles? Honey, God has already declared that in the latter day, and that the latter rain shall be greater than the former rain. We ain't talking about water coming out the sky. We're talking about the anointing, the glory, the shining of God falling down in the churches upon his people. Not just the preacher, but whoever will believe. Come on, give God a clap off. Amen. Hallelujah. Say with me. Remember, faith in his voice is voice activated. Say, I have this power. I have this power. That raised Christ from the dead. That raised Christ from the dead. Living in my spirit. Living in my spirit. Waiting. Waiting. To manifest. To manifest. Through my voice. Through my voice. Activating. Activate my faith. My faith. Come on, say it. I want you to say it like black folk. I got something. I got something. Say it again. I got something. I got something. Many times we be mad about foolishness. Isn't that true? I want somebody to say it again. What kind of faith do we have? The faith of Jesus Christ, which is the faith of God. Am I right? Yes. All right, now come on. We got the faith of the Son of God, and I want to ask you a question. See, the key is, you say, well, why haven't this faith been released? Because first, you didn't know what you had. Amen. Second of all, you need to be taught how to release it. Amen. And that's why you've been walking around here with power to get anything that you need to manifest itself. Right here in this world. Deuteronomy 8, 18, God said, I will give you power to obtain wealth. That's an anointing. So that comes with grace. Listen to me. All of you have power to obtain wealth. All of you. That comes with grace. Thank you, Robert. That's better. That comes with grace. When God gave you grace, he didn't give you a narrow mind and a limited idea of what God would do in your life on the earth. You know what stops God from doing for us? The first station. The bus stop. The bus stop. No, God just, just, just shows me, deals with me of how to get information. And the number one way we can get it and get revelation when we're preparing ourselves to minister to God's people is while you study or even before you study, pray about the message and let God, while you're praying in the spirit, show you what message. Then study it by praying in the spirit and studying and then God will put it all together. That's too hard for somebody. That's just too hard. Depends on how bad you want. Yeah. Am I right, Bruce? Depends on how bad we want it. 
When we want it bad, brother, we'll pay the price. We'll pay the cost to be the boss. Yes. Right? Amen. Come on. Amen. Now let me show you how God works. We came from that marvelous service last night, and it wasn't marvelous because I preached. It was marvelous because God was there. Amen. And he manifested himself, both in our ministry of music and in different ways. Um, after I came back from the service, I'll tell you a little story about the leader and his wife in a moment. Kitty came down with a super toothache. I mean, when I say super, it took her to the floor. Now that's pain. When it hit you so hard in your jaw to you on the floor, you're in pain. So I told her, come, come here, let me pray. I put my hand on her jaw and began to pray by using the word the way I've taught you, knowing I've already got healing in me. I've already got the same spirit in me, and so do you, that raised Christ from the dead. And if the same spirit be in us that raised Christ from the dead, then we can do this because of John 14, 12. He said, greater works than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. Remember, I kind of touched that last night, but they put me up too late. So you have to look at this here. When I laid hands on her, I spoke. Philemon says, if we acknowledge all of the good things that are in us, in Christ Jesus, our faith becomes effective. Is that not what he said? Hmm? So I acknowledge that healing power is in me like it is in all of you. Don't start looking at me talking about, well, you, you have the apostolic anointing. It has nothing to do with it. It's the fact that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in us. That's what gives us the ability to do the works of Christ. Yes. Now, if you were to stop letting your head, some of you that are crippled, sick, broke down, whatever your problem is, mental, eye problem, ear problem, if you just for one moment take your head out of the way when prayer is offered, you will see a manifestation of the healing that's been already given for 2,000 years. You will see it happen. I laid hands on her and prayed. And, and when I took my hand away, her eyes got big and fixed and she stared at me and started laughing. She said, it's coming. Well, what did you expect? Amen. I expected it to be gone. Yes. Yes. Hello. Yes. And it left. Yes. Just like that. She got up and started selling out like she always does. <laughs> Amen. That's another way that I know she wasn't in no pain. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some people are going to be themselves no matter what. They started selling out. And right after, right after the, the, the poor Uncle John, he laid hands and let God use him. Now she won't sell out. And that pain was that she wasn't selling out. <laughs> pain will humble you people <laughs> amen so let me tell you when, when, when you start to recognize everyone must recognize that Jesus is in you in the form of the Holy Ghost the, the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit does not work separate from each other they work in conjunction with each other always are you still in here? Yes. When the Holy Ghost came in you, that was Christ in you. Because they work together. Amen? Amen? Now, here's the next thing you must understand. All knowledge, all knowing is inside of you. When we have questions, we ought to pray and expect God in that prayer. Not tomorrow, three days later, then. To give us the answer. All of you have this. All of you, it's not for a minister, it's for the body of Christ. Amen. For too many years we've been trained and taught to believe that God is up here and he's going to send something down, but that's not the way it's taught when you really get down to it. Yes. You don't move God with your faith, you move things. Yes. You move circumstances. Yes. You move devils. You move disease. You move sickness. Yes. Those are the mountains. God is not the mountain. Yes. Amen. 23, you can read it for yourself. 
For by grace, what? Why did God say, by grace through faith you are saved? Here's what he was saying. By his grace, through you believing, you believing what his word said, you receive supernatural faith called the faith of God. And that faith is the faith that God used by giving it to you to give you salvation. Did you get all of that? Over here where the Bible said, Faith, come, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. What God was really saying, <clears throat> another translation of that is this, that when we heard the word of God, a supernatural faith was in the word of God, and when we received the word, we received that supernatural faith, and that supernatural faith is what? Gave us the ability to receive Christ. You do not receive Christ with natural human faith. You receive Christ with a supernatural faith found in 2 Peter 1, 1 and other places. And that is the faith of God. Amen. And that same faith is used for us to get everything else supernaturally. The same faith. The Bible said we have this same spirit of faith. Is that not what it said? Let's turn to 2 Corinthians 4 and 13 and see if in fact this is true. If the church stopped always trying to go out and show off and be seen and be lifted up and wear titles and get in people's business, you might need to not go there either. Amen. And focus on what's important. You know what's important to me? It's important to me that the church walk in the supernatural. Amen. Amen. That's important to me. Anybody else, is that important to you? Yes. It's important that when you get ready to die, you don't have to die sick. Amen. But that God just take your spirit out and take you on to heaven and your body gets put in the ground. That's it. Amen. Still in here. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Are you there? Yes. We having what? The same? What do we have? The same what? Spirit of faith. Do you all believe that? What is the same spirit of faith? What is the same spirit of faith? Let's, let's finish reading that. Let's finish reading that. He says, we have in the same spirit of faith According as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore speak. Here's, 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 here's what this really means to us, beloved. Because a lot of people read these things and, and, and have no idea what the uh, apostle was talking about when the Holy Spirit gave him this. First of all, we all do have faith. That's what he's showing us right here. Right? You may be struggling, you may be warring, and you may be out there fighting to get some things or to go through some things, but one thing, two things you do not struggle for, and that's faith, healing, prosperity, and deliverance. You should not struggle because that was given us by grace. It is located in your spirit. If this was not true when I prayed for Kenny last night and I called upon the anointing in my spirit to manifest, that's what I said, to manifest in her mouth. I spoke to pain because I have authority in this earth given to us by Jesus and pain left because the anointing manifested. Amen. Immediately. Does that make me powerful? Though that makes me know what I'm talking about. Amen. That's what it makes me. The power comes from God. Amen. Now he says, he says, you got the same spirit of faith that God used in me last night. Hello. Amen. You have the same spirit of faith as Paul and Peter, John, and all the other apostles that were used of God. You have the same thing. Quit, quit letting Satan talk to your mind. And tell you about your great doctrine. When I was coming up, people used to talk about their great doctrine. I love to hear Pastor So and So teach that great doctrine. 
And the whole lot of that doctrine was as wrong as anything you could ever imagine. It was terrible. That doctrine was all about dressing, where you go, how you wear your hair. It was about wigs, believe it or not. How many of you were back there then? You remember that? It was about wigs. People, you have no idea how silly people were. Talk about this, 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 this sanctified doctrine. What is a sanctified doctrine? What they had was called legalism. Legalism is witchcraft. Now you can't wear, uh, uh, and I'm going to meddle a little bit because I want to meddle. You can't wear an open toe shoe. I've never seen toes that turn me on. Never. As a matter of fact, most of them turn me off. Tell the truth. I'm just being honest about it. Look at this. What about you, brother? You see them coming out of my toes. But you sometimes I really want to say you got some ugly toes. I really want to say it, but I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. So I don't say that. I just let them know I like the colors on their nails. I'm just telling the truth. And, and some of you feel the same, but you just want to admit it. Come on, put those hands together. You just want to admit it. That's all. Amen. If if we are going to walk in the supernatural, we need to know what we have and who we really are. There's a song that says starts off by saying in, in the in the in the words, the lines it says, I'm just a man. And then when it gets to the chorus, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. Are we just men and women? Is that no, true? No. We're more than that. Yes. We are more than that. We are more than that. You are more than just a woman. When, when you get full of the Holy Ghost, you're a God-made woman. You're more than that. Come on, come on. Come on, get out of that All right. Here's the next thing you need to know, those that love to take notes. Faith is activated by words according to this verse. Notice what it said. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believed and therefore have I spoken. In other words, when you believe, you actually speak what you believe. You always speak what you believe. It's not a time in your life that you do not speak what you believe. Notice, faith is activated by words. So we say faith is voice activated. Voice activated. Amen. Dick, turn that air off. This, this Paulie is filling it now. I mean, every time I get on this coat, call I get an ice feeling over here, icy. You know that icy cold feeling. You know what afros are here, brother? My afro diminished. My afro diminished. I couldn't wear it no more. Amen. <laughs> I don't mind the ball head club. It's okay. Just sweat too much. That's all. Somebody say amen. amen. Now watch this. If faith is voice activated, then the child of God, now that you know this, have got to start speaking and believing that what you say shall come to pass. Come on. If you look at Mark 11, 23, which I don't want to go, but I will go because we're talking about faith. Let's look at this. Mark 11, 23. Nobody could teach it like Jesus. Amen. He made it simple and he came to the point. He says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, the mountain he spoke of because as the last prophet of the Old Testament, which is what he was, he was still Preaching and teaching under the law. That's why they wanted to kill him. 
because he wasn't preaching what Moses and, and other guys was preaching. He came with a gospel they had never heard. And they were like, where did he get those words? In other words, we can't find it in the Septuagint. We can't find it in the first five books where God gave Moses the law in Numbers, in Exodus. We can't find it. Where did he get these words? He was bringing them a new day. Amen. A new people were about to be raised up. And he was standing in the power of the might of the Holy Ghost. And he was a radical. He wasn't there for a name like some preachers are, are running around here trying to be seen and posing in the pulpit. Don't want to sweat and get ugly like me, brother. <laughs> no, he was there to, to condemn and judge Satan and free God's people from him. Amen. He was there to, oh, come on, to do that. that. That's what was important. Set God's captive free. That, that's what he was there for. And, and as he preached, he said this here. For verily I say unto you, now the whosoever here is speaking about born again believers, not sinners. Sinners cannot do this because every sinner is a dead spirit. No sinner is spiritually alive. Every sinner is a dead spirit. Come on, somebody. There is no life of God in a sinner, so this does not apply. Only those that have received Christ and are now walking in the authority of a believer. Only they can stand and tell the story. While you fretting over her hurricanes, you tell that thing, you're not coming over here and destroying my property. My property is under sanction and protection of the Holy Ghost. Go to bed. Just go to bed. And while you're turning, remember this, whatever is deep, down in your heart will come out of your mouth. I'm going to repeat that. If hate is deep in your heart, hate will come out in your words. 